Good morning, we will be reaching Edinburgh in 19 hours, we will be providing you with some scotch to drink, enjoy your flight. Scotland is a country that is part of the United Kingdom. Covering the northern third of the island of Great Britain, mainland Scotland has a 96-mile border with England to the southeast and is otherwise surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean to the north and west, the North Sea to the northeast and the Irish Sea to the south. The country also contains more than 790 islands. Most of the population, including the capital Edinburgh, is concentrated in the central belt, the plain between the Scottish Highlands and the southern uplands, in the Scottish Lowlands. Scotland is divided into 32 administrative subdivisions or local authorities, known as council areas. Glasgow City is the largest council area in terms of population, with Highland being the largest in terms of area. Furniture and furnishings in early modern and late medieval Scotland were made locally or imported, mostly from Flanders and France. Although few pieces of furniture survive from the early part of the period, a rich vocabulary and typology is preserved in inventories and wills. This documentary evidence in the Scots language details the homes of the wealthy and aristocratic. A survey of furniture and archival evidence, but lacking references, was published by John Warrack in 1920. British and Irish Inventories, London, 2010. Lists of furniture and movables were formerly known as inventories of plenishing. The architectural ambitions and furnishings of the political elite in late 17th century Scotland revealed in inventories were investigated by Charles Wemyss. A taste for London-made furnishings was satisfied by new workshops in Edinburgh, including the making of cane-backed and seated chairs by William Scott, by James LeBlanc of the Canongate who made looking glasses, and Sarah Dalrymple who painted furniture in the Japan style.
Significant early antiquarian collectors of Scottish furnishings include Walter Scott, Charles Kirkpatrick Sharp, William Sterling Maxwell, William Fraser, and Joseph Noel Payton. William Burrell donated Scottish furniture, now shown at Province Lordship in Glasgow. The ceiling of a chamber in the palace at Stirling Castle was decorated in 1540 with carved roundels framing portraits of historical and legendary figures. Have you ever dreamed of making your home look like it came straight out of the Scottish Highlands? For many people, the idea of coming home to a cozy, warm house in the European countryside is truly a dream come true. Thankfully, it's actually possible to replicate the design of Scotland, no matter where you are in the world. One of the best examples of this is Ralph Lauren Home Decor. They have tons of equestrian and preppy themes. You may also be able to find a similar aesthetic at Pottery Barn, or get lucky with discounted pieces at Home Goods. Of course, the brand name does not matter. As long as you make it tartan, you should be good to go. An amazing tradition over in the UK that we should see more often here in the USA is a cabinet of curiosities. This practice originated during the Victorian era, when people were fascinated with the macabre. Typically, these items would be collected over the course of a lifetime. Modern homes usually try to stay away from dark colors in favor of bright minimalist vibes. Usually, having lighter colors helps people feel like they are in a happier mood. But in Scottish homes, the color scheme usually feel very masculine and dark. They don't shy away from green, brown, red, or blue walls. The color scheme is very earthy in general.
For most of you, finding great accent pillows is a no-brainer, no matter what kind of style you have in your home. However, remember that Scottish vibes are all about having somewhere cozy to lay down with a good book. So pillows are a must-have. If you are not sure how to incorporate tartan fabrics into your home, accent pillows may be the best place to start. You can find the pattern in almost any color, and they can easily be thrown on a couch or chairs. Most Scottish homes that have been passed down from generation to generation are filled with antiques that were left behind from previous owners. Or, people inherit items from their grandparents, and they ultimately end up on display at some point. European homes famously have real wooden furniture. Instead of relying completely on cheap pieces, try to incorporate some real wood into your Scottish-inspired home. Don't worry about matching perfectly. If you are in a tight budget, start out by visiting local auctions, thrift stores, and yard sales to see if you can find pieces that are in good condition. With real wood, you can also sand and restain anything that needs some TLC.